All right, hi, welcome to the Urban Outdoors and SoCal video. My name is Danny Milton, and today we're gonna to be talking about the DJI Mavic 3. What I'm gonna be going over today is everything you need to do for your first flight. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to register your drone. This drone is large enough and heavy enough that you need to register it with the FAA. So if you just Google register your drone, a bunch of different websites will pop up and they'll charge you anywhere from 10 to $100 or, or so on and so forth, giving you a bunch of things that you don't really need. What you need to do, and I'll show you the web address, I'll show you a little screenshot of what I did, is you go to the FAA's actual drone registering site. What you're gonna do is you're gonna punch in your name, your address, all that kind of stuff. You're gonna punch in information on your drone, the brand, the model number, and also the serial number. After you've done all of that stuff, you're gonna pay for it. It only costs $5. Doesn't matter which brand of drone it is. You know, my Skydio was $5, my Mavic Air 2 was $5. It's what it's always been. So after you've paid your $5, the FAA will send you your certificate. It's gonna have your name, the model number of your drone, and the serial number. And at the bottom, it's gonna have a registration number. So what you need to do with that registration number is somehow put that onto your drone. Tape it down, you can write it on there, whatever you need to do. Uh, what I normally do is I just get a small piece of paper, write the drone uh, registration number on there, and just tape that onto one of the arms of the drone. So what you need to do next is charge all of your batteries. You have to charge the remote and you have to charge all of your flight batteries. DJI does supply you with a wall charger so that you can plug that into your drone and charge those batteries really fast. So the next thing you have to do is download the DJI Fly app onto your phone. I already had the app on my phone, but it wasn't updated. When you turn on that app, it goes into landscape mode and in the bottom right hand corner, it says connect aircraft. What you wanna do is before you turn your drone on or the remote, just touch that little button that says connect aircraft and it'll show all of the models that you can connect to. If the Mavic 3 model is not on there and I'll show you what that looks like, you're gonna to have to update that app so that it can connect to your Mavic 3. So the next thing you have to do is connect your phone to the remote. So depending on what type of phone you have, if it's Android or an iPhone, you're gonna to have to use the corresponding cable to connect your phone to the remote. The next thing you're gonna do is turn on your remote, press the power button once, release, and then push down and hold it, and you will see the lights pop up, and that means that your remote is turned on. Once your remote turns on, the app can pop up automatically on your phone, and those two things will be connected. Next thing you wanna do is turn on your drone. Um, I always turn on my drone after the remote is turned on. It's just something that I kind of got used to when I would fly FPV drones. Um, an FPV drone, if you were to just turn the drone on first without the remote control turned on, the drone could just take off and, and, and crash or, or do something crazy. Um, I know the DJI drones, I don't think I've ever done that. I've never had that experience, but I still go through that, you know, phone, remote, and then I turn on the drone. So once you connect your phone to the drone for the first time, um, it's most likely that you're gonna have to download a new firmware. You may even have to update the, the FlySafe data as well. So make sure that this first flight that you take, that you do have some good cell phone service because you're gonna have to download that new firmware. It's probably gonna be a big file, probably anywhere from three to 400 megabytes. So we've got everything turned on. Our phone is on, the remote is on, the drone is on. The one thing that you wanna definitely check for before you launch your drone is you see in the upper right hand corner of that screen, there's a little satellite icon. And right now it's reading 10, it just moved to 11. When you first turn your drone on, it has to connect to a bunch of satellites. And it'll show red, you know, when there's not a lot of satellites connected, orange when there's a few. And then once it turns white, it's connected to enough satellites that the GPS is gonna work properly and it will know where your drone is gonna go and your drone knows where it's going, you know, going to be flying. Do not take off until that white icon or that satellite icon turns white. If you do, your drone could do all kinds of crazy stuff and, and crash and that's not a great, that's not a great uh, scenario. So you can see here on my screen, um, we've got 100% battery. Um, I'm in a flight area where I can only fly up to about 100 feet because there's an airport nearby, but I am able to fly here. Um, you can see uh, bottom right corner, We've got our video settings. Um, you can see a manned aircraft just popped up there. If you wanna see any manned aircraft in the area, you click that little box on the left-hand corner, make that bigger like that, and it will show you. So you can see I've got all kinds of flight restrictions in my area, but I know I am able to fly here. 
Um, if you do scroll out on that screen, sometimes you'll be able to see that those aircrafts flying around you, you'll see a little you know, airplane icon. Switch back to our main screen here, minimize that. Go through our settings really quickly. You click those three little dots in the top right corner. We're gonna start off on safety. Now the first thing that pops up, you can see, is the flight assistance. You have bypass, brake, and off. So what that basically does is anytime you're flying towards an object with your drone, um, you have basically three options. You can bypass it. So the drone, if you're flying straight directly towards a tree, and I actually did a video on this with the Mavic Air 2. This is not a new feature. This feature has been around for quite a while. Um, I did a full video with the Mavic Air 2. If you wanna see that video, you can click there. Really quickly is if you're flying towards a tree, your drone will either fly around it automatically or fly over it. I don't know if it will fly under it automatically. I haven't tested that yet with the new drone. Or you can switch to brake. So if you're flying towards a tree or a wall or anything like that, the drone will get to a certain distance away and it'll stop automatically. Or if you wanna turn that flight assistance off, you can and it shows you crashing into a bunch of trees. I'm gonna leave that on bypass. Uh, display radar map, you can turn that on or off. Flight protection, this is just your max altitude. You know, your, your max altitude, you're never supposed to fly more than 400 feet above from your takeoff point. So if you take off at sea level, you're not supposed to fly above 400 feet. If you take off on top of a mountain that is 10,000 feet, you can fly your drone up to 10,400 feet. It's 400 feet from your takeoff spot. The next thing you're gonna see is your max distance. Right now, that's automatically set to no limit. Your max distance is supposed to be how far you have direct line of sight to that drone. You're never supposed to fly it anywhere where you can't see it. You know, if it's 30 feet away from you and it goes behind a tree, I think you're okay, but you're not supposed to fly it, you know, a couple hundred yards away behind trees or behind buildings where you can't see it because you could crash, you could hit another drone, you could hit a multitude of things. Um, you can change that return to height altitude however you want it to be. So basically if the drone ever loses connection to the remote, what it will do is it'll fly up to whatever altitude you put, it'll fly back to your return to home spot and then land. Um, you can update your home point anytime you want. Um, you do that when obviously the drone is in the air. Um, you're also going to see your compass and your IMU. You do need to calibrate those things if you click the calibration button it goes through and shows you how to do that. Um, you got your battery info, your LEDs. Most of that stuff I just leave to auto. Um, front LEDs on, uh, unlock geo zone. So to unlock a geo zone, you go through the whole system, you, know, you go through the whole process of unlocking an area you're not supposed to fly in. Some areas will let you, if you provide all the information and tell them how long you're gonna be flying, you may be able to get permission to fly in one of those locked areas. So we get down to the bottom where it says advanced safety settings. You're gonna tell the drone what you want it to do if it loses connection to your remote. Do you want it to return to home? Do you want it to descend where it is? Or do you want it to hover? I would always suggest that you do return to home as long as you make sure that that home point is a good clear, you know, you've got a clear view directly up from the sky where that return to home is. If you set it to descend or hover, you have no idea, I mean, you could, it could be descending and it might land in some water, it might land on a tree. And then if you leave it to hover, eventually the battery is gonna run out. You know, let's say worst case scenario, you're walking and you're flying your drone, you trip, you fall and you knock yourself unconscious. Uh, that drone's just gonna hover until the battery's dead and then it's just gonna descend where it is anyway. So definitely return to home is the best selection for there. Uh, you've got your propeller stops, all that kind of stuff. You wanna leave your air sense on. Uh, go into controls really quickly. We are going to do Imperial because I'm an American and, you know, we don't follow the rest of the world. Um, let's see. Gimbal mode is follow. Advanced gimbal mode. So you can change how quickly your gimbal will turn or move. Um, if you want it to do a little bit more cinematic of a shot, you're going to slow that down a little bit. Um, you can customize a couple of buttons here. We're not going to go through that. Okay, so we got our camera settings here. Um, for video, I use MP4 color. You can use D-Log or normal. Um, I won't go into what D-Log is, just real quickly. Um, I typically use H.264. You can use 265. It just compresses. It makes the files a little bit smaller and easier to handle. Uh, video bitrate. You've got all these things here. An uh, Anti-flicker. Video subtitles. Your histogram. I like to have the histogram on 
it's that little square box and it shows you kind of what your exposure looks like. Um, let's see, overexposure, you can do all these kinds of things. Nothing really necessary to getting your drone up in the air. Um, you want to make sure you have an SD card in there. You're going to have to format it. Uh, let's see, max video, cache capacity, I switched to four. Let's see, okay, so now we're over to transmission. Um, I leave that on dual band. It will just pick whatever's best. Um, it'll go between 2.4 and 5.8. Channel mode auto, let's let do all that stuff. Then we're gonna go to about. This is just, you know, where you're gonna check your updates. This is where all your information about your drone is. Um, you can check for updates, your, your, your FlySafe database apps, your battery serial number, your aircraft serial number, all of that stuff, flight controller, everything. All of that information is there. So, so just looking at the screen really quickly, one last time before we launch here, um, I've got my histogram there at the bottom. I've got that radar in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, let's see what else. We've got plenty of satellites. Now we're connected up to 17, 18 satellites. Um, anytime I fly or take off, I like to take off the drone in video mode. It just shows you a wider picture on the screen here itself. You know, if you switch to photo mode really quickly, you see how much smaller the actual image is that you're looking at on your phone. So switch back to video. Uh, what else do we got here? Um, you definitely want to take off in normal mode. Normal mode is kind of like your middle ground as far as how fast a drone will fly. Um, if you put it in cine mode, the drone flies very slowly. Um, the problem with cine mode is if you're close to a tree or, or an object and the wind is blowing your drone into that, you will not be able to react quickly enough to fly away from that object in cine mode. And then sport mode obviously is the fastest. It's going to fly up to its full speed, uh, but it's not going to have any of the vision sensors available to you. So if you fly towards an object and you don't see it, you're going to crash. All right, so we got the drone up in the air. There's, a, like I said, there's an airport nearby, so there's a lot of manned aircraft flying overhead. So you're gonna see that icon popping up quite regularly. Um, but I'm not gonna fly more than 10, 15 feet off the ground, so we don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. Got the drone in the air. We're just using the controller sticks here. You know, up, down, left, right. Um, what I would recommend that you do is, anytime you're flying the drone, don't look at the drone and use the sticks. Just look only at your screen while you're flying the drone because if the drone is coming back towards you, you know, if you fly it away from yourself and it's coming back towards you, your right and left are gonna be opposite and you may not be used to that and you could fly it into something. So just look at the screen, always fly forward mainly. You know, you are going to maybe drift or out to the right or left. Don't always depend on those sensors to stop you from hitting something watch the screen, kind of get a feel of where you're flying and just take it nice and easy for your first couple of flights. You can see those sensors popping up, showing us that we're kind of close to trees here, just flying pretty easy. See, it was getting me close to those trees, started to fly forward and it increased in elevation automatically. You can see as we get close to those trees, sometimes the orange will pop up, sometimes the red will pop up. So a couple other things that you want to do anytime you're going to go fly your drone is check your local laws. Um, just because the DJI app says that it's okay for you to fly there, there could be local city ordinances preventing you from flying in that area even though the DJI app says it's okay to. Another thing you want to do before you launch that drone is make sure everything is, you know, looks good. Check your propellers, make sure the arms are on there, make sure nothing's loose, make sure that the, gim the gimbal is nice and solid. Make sure your battery's pushed in all the way. Before you take off, make sure that there's nobody in your general vicinity. You don't want, you know, a little kid to run across and, you know, check out your drone or, or you know, a dog or anything like that. Just make sure that the general area is clear and then go ahead and hit that launch button. You always want to make sure that you're following the FAA rules. There's only about four rules you need to follow. I'm not going to list them all right now, but usually the biggest one is flying around other people. You don't want to fly above people within a certain distance. You know, I believe the FAA rule is 50 feet. I never fly anywhere within 100 feet to, you know, 200 feet of other people. You know, if you're at the beach um, or if you're at a crowded event, you don't want to get too close to people. Some people can be scared of the drone. Some people think that you're videotaping them in a way that they're not okay with. So 
just keep your drone away from people and make sure you keep it at a good height. So this drone shipped without a lot of the features that we're used to in a normal DJI drone, you know, active track, all the POI stuff like that. Um, I'm not gonna get into that, but if you do wanna know all the features that are gonna be coming in a, I believe it's a firmware update sometime in January of next year, um, watch DC Rainmaker's video. He goes like super in depth into all of the, the, the ins and outs of these drones. He'll show you exactly what the drone can do and a lot of the features that will be coming in January. All right, so thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully this video will be helpful to anybody out there who's having any problems launching their drone or if they're kind of scared to do it. You know, you might be a first time drone owner and it's, it's, it's kind of an intimidating, you know, intimidating uh, toy that you're sending up in the air. You know, those blades are really sharp. Um, it makes a lot of noise. Sometimes drones freak certain people out, you know. Um, if there's animals around, animals tend to not like the drone just because of the, the noise that it makes. It's really easy. DJI makes these drones pretty much fly themselves. So once you do all the stuff that we've already talked about, it's really easy to get this drone up into the air. I'm gonna be doing a bunch more videos on this drone. You know, I, my specialty for these drones, I use them a lot for active track. Um, when that firmware update does come out in January, I'm gonna be doing a bunch of comparisons, you know, seeing how well this does. I'm gonna compare it to the Skydio 2. I still have a Skydio 2. Um, that drone is amazing for tracking, but this drone has a lot of pluses that the Skydio 2 does not have. You know, we're gonna be out on my mountain bike. We're gonna go out to the desert in my car. We're gonna do all the same tracking videos that I did with the Mavic Air 2. Um, if you wanna see my Mavic Air 2 videos, you can click on that link right there. I took that thing to the park, to the beach, um, tracking on my mountain bike, tracked my car out in the desert. We're gonna test all of those things. We're gonna see how well the Mavic 3 does. So please do all that fun stuff for me, please. Smash that like button, share, comment, subscribe to the channel. The more likes that this video gets, the more times you guys comment on these videos, it will send these videos out to more, you know, a general, a, a bigger audience. I get more views. You guys can help each other out in the comments. You know, if you have any questions for me, leave those down in the comments below. I, I try my best to get back to you guys when you have problems with the drone. Hopefully I'll be able to help you get through those problems. I mean, that's the whole point of these videos is, is helping you guys, you know, get these drones in the air and use them to their fullest ability. Like I said, definitely subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna have a bunch more videos coming out. Click that bell notification so when those videos do come, you'll get that notification and you can watch and we can figure out all this stuff together. All right, and last but not least, click on one of the boxes in the corners. One will take you to the Mavic Air 2 playlist, another to a favorite video, and you can click the logo over there, the Urban Outdoorsman SoCal logo to subscribe. Thanks a lot.